morning, everyone. I believe uh, we've arrived at 10 o'clock or maybe a couple of minutes later. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'll call the Paulding County uh, Board of Commissioners work session to order this July the 11th of 2023. And I uh, ask the marshal, right, if you bring the list, if anybody wants to speak, uh, if you'll silence your phones, please. And we're glad to have, thanks, sir, uh, Chair Gary Gulledge here and uh, also, we'll get to hear from uh, the airport uh, director here shortly. Glad to have Terry here. Uh, we will begin, as always, with uh, a prayer and then a pledge. So stand with me if you're able. Grace God, I'm reminded of the uh, scripture, the, the words of David when he wrote uh, that... Uh, <clears throat> that you uh, anoint the, the, the thinking and the work that we do here today, uh, that you just um, guide us and direct us with your wisdom, and we uh, pray for our staff and we pray for our law enforcement, and just thank you for the opportunity to be in the United States of America and conduct government freely and hopefully productively. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Under minutes, uh, the June 27, 2023 work session minutes and the June 27, 2023 board meeting minutes are available for review. Um, under announcements, uh, our employee of the month, uh, Corporal Kevin uh, Dutton uh, with the Sheriff's Office uh, will be recognized today uh, via this video, so let's watch that together. Uh, he's a great guy. He's the, just an outgoing instructor, uh, positive, positive guy. The spring in service, he created, developed, and implemented a defensive tactics program that we've been needing at the Sheriff's Office. He started working on it last year and was able to finish it up and develop it into a, a course that we rolled out to every deputy in the agency this year. The defensive tactics program he created was uh, how officers can safely and effectively take somebody under control either through compliance or if they're resisting, how to uh, handle suspects uh, in a way that minimizes risk to the officer and to the suspects in general. So we moved into a Taser 7 program. Uh, we moved from the X26P, which is the old Taser platform, to the new Taser 7. So he was responsible and in charge of the acquisition of those. So he did a lot of work, a lot of legwork, getting us down to a price that was affordable for us to transition. And then once we did purchase the tasers, he created, developed, and implemented a taser program for us to roll out to every deputy. So on top of the defensive tactics, he also taught every deputy in the agency uh, how to use the Taser 7. He's so forward thinking and trying to make this place better, which is refreshing in law enforcement. Thank you for, for everything you've done for, for the training center and for the department itself. Like you, you've done a tremendous job and we can't thank you enough for the work you do. Uh, congratulations, Corporal Dutton. I know you're glad to have him, Sheriff. <clears throat> I have no um, invited guests this morning. Uh, under bid awards, item two is discuss action to approve the Watson Complex pressure washing bid uh, to advance cleaning and restoration in the amount of $65,300. Ms. Pollard. Good morning. Good morning. Um, this has been a long-awaited project. I've heard from quite a few that uh, we have, we need to get this place cleaned up. So that's this is an attempt to do that. Um, on June 30th, we received nine participants in the bid process. Those bids ranged from 19,200 up to 98,500. 
um, we have reviewed those bids and in the process we asked for references because we wanted somebody that had done comparable projects. Um, we've got a lot of traffic here. We have a lot of people here on the weekends, after hours. So we wanted somebody that has um, experience. We believe that we did get that participant and we are recommending award to the lowest responsive bidder um, in the amount at advanced cleaning and restoration in the amount of $65,300. And uh, we're happy to say that they are a local participant. So unless you have any questions. Thank you, Tabitha. Bid award number, uh, item number three is to discuss action to approve the purchase of a cold planer attachment for the Department of Transportation from the lowest uh, responsive quote, Yancey Brothers, in the amount of $53,676, Mr. George Jones. Good morning. Good morning. In the 2023 capital budget, $30,000 was allocated towards the purchase of a coal planer attachment that would attach to a track loader or a skid steer. A coal planer attachment essentially mills asphalt surfaces using carbide tip teeth. Um, this attachment would be used for smaller area asphalt milling. Our existing coal planer is a 2008 Bobcat high flow planer. You know, the Bobcat unit is basically slap wore out. So I'm trying to be, trying to be technical here. Um, this planer will attach to our Bobcat 70, 770 track loader. After we did some research, maintenance folks, they determined that a blue diamond 160825 coal planer attachment was a viable option for this Bobcat track loader. The blue diamond unit has a 40 inch milling width and a cut up to eight inches. Um, we solicited quotes from six dealers and ENC Brothers did have the lowest responsive quote in the amount of 53,000. $676. The coal planter unit comes with a one year's manufacturer's warranty. And to fund the purchase, we're requesting to use the 30K that was allocated in the 2023 capital budget, along with $23,676 in current year general funds. Any questions on that bid award? Sounds like it'll be put to good use, George. Thank you. Yeah, we got, we got a lot of use out of this old um, coal planter attachment um, before we actually had a full-size attachment we used this bobcat a lot of areas a lot of areas it was probably a little bit uh, overworked so um, like I said it, it's time do you get to go out and practice on it I don't think you want me practicing on that stuff you want you want trained professionals not me <laughs> uh, I bet you. all right uh, we're fortunate and uh, thankful to have Terry Tibbetts here uh, as a report from committees and departments to talk about our beautiful airport. Um, this is the annual report by Mr. Tibbetts. Thank you for being here, Terry. Thank you all. <clears throat> you all have been very active in what's going on at the airport over the past year, so uh, there are no surprises, which is good. That's good news. Uh, so I'm just going to be very brief, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to briefly read a set of highlights from 2023, from FY23, and talk about the plans that we've got coming up. It's only one page, so it won't take long. <laughs> All right, so the highlights are over the past 24 months, the airport has doubled the number of based aircraft from 20 to 45. Over that same period, the tax assessor's office reports that the tax digest for based aircraft at the airport grew from 36.7 million to 41.3 million. That's an increase of $4,536,987. So that is an increase in the tax digest so so these are all taxable assets so that's that much tax money uh, that the taxpayers of Paulding County do not have to pay um, so how much money is that that's about four hundred and twenty five thousand dollars a year now that we're generating and as you know y'all are contributing four hundred and twenty five thousand dollars through uh, the IGA for the O&M budget of the airport so on the O&M side, we're now basically revenue neutral. Now that's from a taxpayer's perspective because you all pay 100% of the uh, O&M budget, but two thirds of the taxes, of course, go to the school system. So the school system is really the big beneficiary at this point of the airport. But again, from a taxpayer perspective, that's $425,000 in taxes that are generated by the airport that offsets the tax money that goes to maintain the airport. So we think that's, that's good news. 
Like all airports, our airport is being built incrementally. We opened in 2008. Uh, Y'all have made major contributions over the last year or two. Um, the two big projects that we completed this year is the reconfiguration of the north ramp. Uh, that's the concrete strip between the terminal building and, and Hangar 1, uh, which positions us for uh, growth at the airport. And then, of course, the connection of the sewer line to the city of Dallas trunk line that runs out to the edge of the airport property out there. That is now connected, working. Um, go flush a commode and, and thank Dallas for taking care of the sewage for us. And, of course, the big reason for doing that now was the Chattahoochee Tech building uh, getting ready to open. And, and our little um, uh, commercial septic tank system could not handle a building that size. So we are now uh, completed ahead of schedule. Uh, they have already paid for the, the stub line that runs from our flagpole at, um, at Hangar 1 up to their building. So they're ready to connect. So there is nothing on the county or the city side that is holding up the completion of the Chattahoochee Tech building. So that's very good news. That was a, um, that was a team effort from both Dallas, uh, from y'all as far as funding, from us, from uh, Scott Green who managed the project. So uh, we're very, very pleased with, with how that has turned out. Speaking of the new school building, if you haven't driven by there today, uh, it looks different than it did yesterday, and it will look different tomorrow. It's at that stage where they are making spectacular uh, incremental changes to the building. Today, it's canary yellow. Um, hopefully, it, it won't stay that color for very long. That's the waterproofing uh, that goes uh, on the outside of the building before you put the final um, facade on the building. But it, it's looking really good. The hangar. Uh, now has uh, has its sheet metal on the side, so it's looking just fantastic there. And they are on schedule to turn the building over to the state around November, so that's all great news. Uh, we're on track to exceed 50,000 takeoff and landings this year, and that makes us the fastest growing airport in the state and the 10th busiest general aviation airport out of the 106 airports in Georgia. Uh, you might have a hard time believing that, uh, given where we've come from. In 2008, we were the zero airport uh, because we had just opened. And today, we're doing 50,000 operations a year. And, and that's uh, primarily due, of course, to our flight schools um, because they do a lot of takeoff and landings. But every takeoff and every landing counts. And that helps generate additional uh, grant funding for us and, and helps justify uh, additional federal and state spending in safety related projects that we will now be able to compete for. So plans for the FY that we're just beginning. Uh, we begin the year with 13 small companies that are operating at the airport. That includes two flight schools, the museum, one aircraft maintenance shop, our avionics shop, the FAA designated examiner, and several other companies um, that are either directly or indirectly related to the aviation field. And about 50 uh, employees now uh, come into the property every day to work. Um, so, you know, it's just been a very slow, steady growth. Um, 50 is not, you know, I tell, tell people, tell the group this morning, that's not Lockheed. You know, we know that. Um, but uh, there was a time in the very beginning when Lockheed had 50 employees. So we all start somewhere. And, and we're very proud of where we are at the airport and the progress that we've made and what we expect to come over the next 12 months. Uh, over the next 12 months, we think the AMP school will be opening. Uh, again, the building gets turned over to the state in November, but they've still got a lot of work to stand up the program. But probably by next fall, they will be teaching classes there, and that'll be exciting for the county. Uh, the museum is on track to start their hangar in the next 12 months. Uh, so that's been a long awaited project, and we're all excited to see that begin to take shape. Uh, we're very hopeful that the Board of Education will move forward with an aviation track in college and career. Uh, college and career is, is uh, the program that's primarily uh, based out of New Hope. I'm sure all of y'all are familiar with that. Uh, but they, they are entertaining the notion of having an aviation track that would be held at the airport, would probably be joint uh, with Polk County, because you've got Polk County High School is actually the closest high school to the airport, uh, just right over the county line there. 
and they have cooperative programs with surrounding counties for these uh, high school, college, and career tracks. And so that's that's something that we're working really hard to try to uh, try to bring to the table, because that would be a feeder program then for the Chattahoochee Tech College program. And as you know, GDOT has just awarded over three million, almost three and a half million, in state funds which is highly unusual for one airport to get that level of funding in state money um, for the airport parkway extension project. And all of these projects have, have uh, names that are assigned for their final ultimate outcome, which in this case is moving airport parkway. But y'all know that that project is really to move 275,000 cubic yards of dirt um, from that big hill that's in front of the main terminal to that big valley where we're going to be building um, about 20 corporate size hangars over the next five years. So everything is moving in accordance with our five-year plan. Our five-year plan has been published for a number of years now on our uh, website, paldenairport.com, so everybody can read it, track it, see what kind of progress we're making towards completing it. And we're just very, uh, very thankful for the cooperation we get from y'all. We are, of course, co-sponsors of the airport. Therefore, it is your airport. Um, and it is the Paulding, uh, Paulding County Airport Authority's airport. And when we work together, it is spectacular what we can accomplish together. So I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. You briefed uh, early in, in that brief uh, almost a doubling of tie-down airplanes. What, That's right. What do you attribute that? the market. Um, it, the aviation market um, has, has been uniquely successful over the past five years. I don't know if it's um, uh, pandemic related uh, and people are traveling by private aircraft more than commercial aircraft or what. I can't really put my fingers on exactly why. Um, but a major contributor is the fact that Fulton County and McCollum are both, both turning their attention primarily to corporate traffic and they're getting rid of their small uh, piston market because there's just more, more money in, um, in heavy iron. Uh, there's more tax money, there's more fuel sales and everything. And we have an advantage that they don't have. I always use McCollum as the example. McCollum owns 350 acres. That includes their runway, their apron, and their 20 or so um, hangers, big corporate hangers that they have out there. And in order to expand, they've got to tear down. And so they are getting rid of uh, tie down space and uh, T hanger space. And that traffic, a lot of it is moving to our airport. So we're benefiting from that. But the advantage we have, as I told the group this morning, we have 350 acres on the south side of the runway that we haven't even begun to plan for yet. That's all airport owned property. And, and we can build an airport bigger than McCollum because we already have our taxiways and runways. We can build an airport bigger than McCollum on the south side. So we have the potential over the next 10 years to become the biggest general aviation airport in the state. That would vise up there with PDK, which is landlocked with its own problems with all of the neighborhoods and everything there in DeKalb County. And so the potential that this airport has and the vision, you know, I always, um, compliment the vision of the people who built this airport, Blake Swafford and others, um, when they opened it in 2008, they were looking a generation ahead when they planned for the infrastructure that we have, the footprint that we have. And so um, there, we don't have to make that decision that McCollum and Fulton County have to make to get rid of our small flyers in order to support the corporate flyers we've got plenty of property to do both. And so that is attracting uh, a lot of these small um, private owners to our airport. Thank you. All right, thank y'all. Yeah, and I didn't mean to cut off any other questions. Any other questions? Okay, thanks for being here. No one signed up for a public participation, um, so we'll move right into the consent agenda. <clears throat> And for the 10 o'clock meeting, it is a requirement that all this be read for the minutes. Um, consideration of the following items. Item number four is to adopt job classification for shop supervisor fire uh, for the fleet. Uh, number two, uh, to adopt job classification for traffic operations engineer for the Department of Transportation. 
Six is to approve the proposed Community Development 2023 Planning and Zoning Division fee schedule. Seven, accept the streets listed below for perpetual maintenance by the county. Uh, the, uh, the summit, these four in the summit at Westridge, phase one. Springer Parkway, Lookout Drive, Lookout Way, Yona Way. Uh, item number eight is to appoint Mark Long to the Cemetery uh, Preservation Commission with uh, a term ending December 31st, 2023. Uh, number nine is to appoint Justin Fuller to the Water and Sewer Advisory Board to fill the unexpired term of Jeremiah Fields ending ending uh, December 31st, 2023. Number 10 is to approve the uh, intergovernmental agreement by and between Paulding County, Georgia, the uh, Paulding County School District and Paulding County Sheriff's Office providing for the utilization of school resource officers in uh, Paulding County schools. Number 11 is to uh, approve a project funding allotment increase in the amount of $35,000 for the completion of the Woodrow K Road Culvert Replacement Project to uh, Summit Construction uh, and Development, LLC. Allotment will be funded by general funds and it's located in Post 1. Would any of the commissioners like to move any of these items I just read over to uh, regular business, new business? Hearing none, they'll stay uh, where they are for the two o'clock voting. Uh, we have no old business this morning. Under new business, we have one item, which is item 12, which is discuss action to approve uh, for the approval of a development agreement between Bickers Construction Incorporated and Paulding County for a developer funded $956,000 uh, capital contribution for the Highway 120 Booster Station upgrade. It's located in Post 1. And Mr. Ray Wooten to fill us in a little bit further. Thank you for being here, Ray. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we have the county, throughout the county, we take care of water up to an elevation of 1130. We've got an area of 1400 acres along Mount Tabor Church Road that is above that elevation where we did a study on how to bring proper uh, pressure up to that area for fire flows and developed a way to service properties. Um, developments that are trying to build in that area, we've gotten together with them to get them to fund this improvement so they do not put in individual booster pump stations in their neighborhoods. And this is the second phase of the overall plan to create a high service area along the Mount Tabor Road area, uh, Mount Tabor Church Road area. Um, this development agreement is with Bickers Construction, who has a big development planned in the area of which they will contribute $956,000 toward the upgrade of our Highway 120 pump station, which will give us the additional pressure we need to boost in the area. Um, we've been working with uh, LGI for phase one that's installing pipe, and Bickers is the second phase where they're doing the upgrade to the pump station. Questions for Ray? Timeline? Um, with the approval of this, we have the plans at 100% for the bidding of the project. So we will be bidding the project um, as soon as we get all signatures to go forward on the development agreement for the upgrade of the pump station. So the timeline is We'd like to do this in the next few months, and then construction is going to take about six months with the upgrades that we need at the facility. I have a question. Um, so the developer is going to pay nine hundred fifty-six thousand, mm -hmm. and then what? Do, what was our cost for that? Nine hundred fifty-six thousand is the anticipated cost 
for the development, I mean, for the pump station upgrade itself. Mm -hmm. If it comes in less than that, 956,000 is what they're obligated for. Um, we do not anticipate it going over. If it does go over, we will come back to the board for any increase. But based on the numbers we run, we do not anticipate it exceeding the 956,000. And but we had other costs, right? Didn't you say we laid pipe or something? Well, the first development agreement approved by the board earlier was for us to supply 9,400 feet of pipe that's being installed by another large developer, LGI. There's a third developer that's going to do a financial contribution um, over the installation of a 250,000 gallon tank. Okay, great. And those three together will take care of our 1,400 acres above 1130. Great. Nice coverage. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. That is the conclusion of regular business. Um, no one has signed up for uh, speaking on non-agenda items. Um, so this is where the uh, commissioners would get to announce something or make any comments. Chairman, there's a mistake on the agenda under the consent agenda. Um, number 11 should be post two, not post one. Are you being possessive there? A little bit. <laughs> Does that surprise you? <laughs> no, thank you for making that correction, Sandy. Uh, we will have that corrected for the two o'clock meeting. And, um, you know, one, one thing we don't think about very much as, as often as we should is uh, marriage. Most people looking around this room are hitched probably been uh, I don't know if anybody's been hitched as long as I have maybe Bob I but uh, or Tim I don't know how long but uh, most people in here are, are married and I looked up a couple of quotes uh, uh, Mark Twain or Samuel Langhorn Clemens said to get the full value of joy you must have someone to divide it with is that true Tabitha and then one that comes from an author or a, a quoter unknown, a good marriage is one where each partner secretly suspects they got the better deal. Um, but somebody in this room that I work very closely with has their 36th anniversary today, and uh, it's Angela Ferris. So congratulations, Angela. On that note, <laughs> uh, Jeep, one of those middle school weddings. You know. <laughs> On that note, uh, I might add that yesterday was my 42nd anniversary, our 42nd right. anniversary. So, um, yeah, Daryl has put up with me that long. Uh, I definitely got the better end of the deal. So, <laughs> you don't have more training to do? Well, a little bit. <laughs> Not much. Keith or Brian, anything? Good, all right. Well, we don't have executive session today either. Uh, th thanks again, Terry, for the report and everyone else for your attendance. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Sandy Caker, Commissioner Caker. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Galloway. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned.